Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is part one of the LibGDX Box 2D Entitled Tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about the basics of Box 2D, as well as how to use LibGDX's Tiled API to read NTMX files. <coughs> NTMX files are files created using this Tiled program. It's a free Tile Map Editor. You can get it at mapeditor.org. And so go ahead and download that because we're going to be using it to create tile maps for the, the tutorial. And of course, this is a libgdx project, so you're going to need libgdx. So head over to their website and download the latest nightly build right here. Cool. So the game that we're going to be making is called Block Bunny, it's a simple platformer. Let me just fit it into the screen here. Okay. So, um, we got this over here. Basically, you have this bunny running to the right, and you have to just jump. Make sure you don't get stuck. And you also have different colors up here, and you have to change the current color in order to be able to run over the block that the current color is. So over here, red, I have to change to the red color. If you don't change to the correct color, then you don't get- there's no collision. So red, I can't go on any green blocks. So you have to make sure you change the correct color in order to actually run over these platforms. And there are three colors, red, green, and blue, and it always changes red to green to blue. And, um, oh, my bad. Yeah, so that's the game that we've been making. Uh, and let's get started, I guess. Now we're going to be creating this as a desktop game. You can use the libgdx set up GUI if you want, but I really don't find it necessary since we're only going to be making a desktop project here. So just create a new project, call it Block Bunny. create a new folder called libs, and we're going to be putting in our libgdx stuff in here. We're going to need the four jars, gdx, lwgl, natives, and just natives. So, pop those four in there, and add them all to the build path. And you should get them in the reference libraries tab over here. Now this first video is just going to be setting up. Um, I'm expecting everyone to know how to set up a libgdx project. If you don't, you can, I guess, watch through this, or the Asteroids tutorial. But uh, for this video, I'm just going to try to skim through. I'm not going to explain everything. Um, so, just create a new package, and we're going to be creating our application listener here as this class called game, and implements application listener. Okay, so game is going to be our application listener. Of course, we need the six methods, public void, uh, render, dispose, and the three that we really don't need, um, resize, um, pause, and resume. We're probably not going to be using any of these three, so these are the three that are important. Of course, create gets called when the application starts, render is the looping method, and dispose gets called when the application ends. Pretty simple. So let's create a bunch of variables up here. Title of the game, call it Block Bunny, and the original dimensions of the game. These are the virtual width and height, independent from the screen size. So that's 320 by 240, and we're going to scale it up by 2 so that it's uh, 640 by 480. So let's go ahead and create the desktop starter. Let's just call it Block Bunny Desktop. And here is our main class, so public void main string args. This is static. Oops. Public static void main. 
Okay, so we're gonna use LWJGL application configuration to configure our LWJGL application. And we're gonna set the title. CFG.title is equal to the game title and um, we call it the width. And this is gonna be the virtual width times the scale, so this is going to be 640, height is going to be 480, the height times game dot scale, and we're going to use this configuration when we create the new uh, application, L, L, W, G, L, application, this one, new game, using the configuration, so let's try it, run this, and here we go, block money, 640 by 480 window. That's pretty much it. So, uh, I'm gonna, for this video, I'm just gonna set up the game state manager and one game state that we're, uh, we're gonna be using. So, first, let's create a new package. Come, eat, clock money. Call this states, and here we're going to be creating our game state class, abstract class. Okay, this is abstract. We don't want to be making any instances of this, just uh, extending off of it. So all protected stuff here. We ha need a reference to the game state manager, so the game itself. Um, we're going to be passing down the sprite patch from the game. This is capital B. And we also need the two cameras that we're going to be using. Orthographic camera. That's what it's called. Let's just import a bunch of these. Import our game, not the LibGDX game. And uh, game state manager will make that soon. We also need a camera for the HUD. Now this camera is going to be our main camera. This is the one that follows the player around. This one is going to be just for the HUD. Like it stays where the at the origin, basically. So constructor. Game scene manager, GSM. This GSM is GSM, and um, let's go back into game and set up the game first. The game is gonna have the sprite batch SB import. It's gonna have the orthographic camera cam import that. Also, of course, the HUD cam. So those three things. And let's just make getters for those public void or not void sprite batch get sprite batch um oops return sp public orthographic camera get camera return cam and one for the HUD cam return HUD cam. Okay, and if we go back to game state, uh, we can actually just grab these now in the constructor. Uh, game is equal to first. Let's get the game from there. Um, and SB is going to be game dot get sprite batch, and cam is going to be game dot get camera. We're just grabbing all of the stuff from the game cameras and the sprite batch. So, that's going to be pretty much it. Um, so, now that we have that finished, let's go create a new package. Call this uh, Handlers, and we're going to put our Game State Manager in here. Uh, class Game State Manager. This is going to handle all the game states. We're going to be using a stack structure for this one. So we can just easily push and pop states. So like a pause menu would be easy, I guess, to implement using this. Uh, import our game here. Game state manager has a reference to the game itself. Private stack, again a stack of game states. Import those. Java util stack. Just Java's regular stack is fine. Um, 
we're going to make one game state for now. Call it play. Put whatever value you want in there. It doesn't really matter. And uh, let's do the constructor. Game state manager. Pass in the game. This dot game is game. Game states is new stack. Create a new game state stack. And we're going to push um, the first state, which is going to be the play state. Okay. We're also going to need update and render. Uh, let me just move this down. Public void render. I always like to separate the update and then the render method, but uh, the application listener only has the render method, so whatever, I'm going to split it up anyway because I want to keep these two things separate. Um, so update is simple, you just get whatever's on the top of the state, uh, game state stack with peak and then just update that, render, same thing. Uh, let's go back into game state for a sec actually and finish it up. We need the four methods, every game state has these four methods, public, abstract, void, handle input, public, abstract, void, update, float, dt, uh, render, and dispose. So there we go. And go back to the game state manager. Those two should be fixed, the update and render. Okay, and now let's finish up the game state manager. Um, and we could put this up here actually. Public game game return game. Just a getter for the game variable, so we can grab it from over here. And um, private. This is going to be a private method because no one else is going to use it. Game state get get state. This is just a helper method to create the new game states. If state is equal to play, then return new play this. Play is going to be a class that we'll make. It's going to be the first game state that we're going to make. And we're going to make it soon. But for now, let's finish up the game state manager class. Public void set state. Setting the state is just going to replace whatever's at the top. So that's just a pop. And then a push. And a... Uh, Course push just pushes a new state onto the top of the stack. Game state stop push. Get state. State. And pop is going to take off whatever's at the top of the stack. First, uh, we also have to dispose of it, so grab it and then dispose. Cool. Okay, so over here, play. We're gonna just make a new play state here. So in the states package, play. And uh, have this extend game state. Okay, constructor, public play, game state manager, uh, GSM, super GSM. And uh, of course we need the four methods from the game state, these four. So we'll just put those in here, handle input, update, render, and dispose. Okay, so um, we're just going to make this a test for now. Private bitmap font, font equals new bitmap font. And um, we're just going to render something to show that this is the play state. So we're going to do sp.setprojectionmatrix cam.combined and sp.begin or do I do sp.begin when drawing fonts? I think so. font.draw sp and just do play state 100 100. So this should come up onto the screen just a play state string once we actually get to use it. What's going on here? Super GSM is not working. Um, 
constructor game state refers to the missing type game state manager. Oh, I didn't import. Go back to the game state. Make sure there are no errors in here. Okay, now it's working fine. So in the game state manager, go ahead and import our latest uh, game state called play. Import that, and all the problems should go away. By the way, um, auto import is Control Shift O on Eclipse. So if you didn't know that, every time I keep saying import and I'm not typing in the import statements up here, I'm just pressing Control Shift O just to make it automatic. Um, so yeah, let's go back into the game class and actually create the game state manager. So over here, let's do private uh, game state manager gsm ah mixing up the variables and the methods let's move all these i guess down here so they're out of the way so sprite batch orthographic camera game state manager import that okay and in create again this gets called when the application starts just create a new game state manager oops this and uh, actually, this is something that um, I haven't done before. We're going to be using fixed time steps because um, the GDX is uh, Box 2D apparently works better with fixed time steps, the world step, I think. But uh, that's just the way that I'm going to be doing things for this. So float, we're going to be using a step of one, uh, 60 frames per second. So that's 1 over 60. And we need an accumulator to keep track of how much time has gone by. So, over here in render, we're going to be creating the loop. Um, first of all, we need to accumulate the time that's gone by. Oops. Graphics get delta time. Add that on there. And we're only going to be updating and rendering if enough time has passed for a step. So what we're going to do up here is just the Q minus equals step, and then we're going to update the game with step. Pretty much. That's pretty much it. Update render, and that's going to be it for that. Hmm. Looks like it. Let's see if this runs. Uh oh. It's not running. I'm getting no pointer exceptions. SB projection matrix cam combined. Oh right, all these are null. Sprite batch cam. All three of these are null. You know, sprite batch and both cameras, because I never initialized them in game over here. I had them up here, but I never actually created them. So let's do that. Sprite batch is new. Sprite batch. This I forgot the new. Cam's new orthographic camera. And we're going to set this to the size, um, what do you call it, the V width and V height, the game's virtual width and height. Same thing with the HUD cam, pretty much. Oops. Oh, uh, let's just copy and paste. Okay, there we go. And I can't spell false. Uh, face. There we go. Okay, now let's try this. There we go. Okay, so play state works. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. All I wanted to do was set up the game. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be messing around with Box 2D. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.